So this video is going to be covering chapter 21.4, uh, nuclear fission and fusion. And though in this last video we discussed fission and fusion, uh, this video we're going to be going a bit more in depth. So first we're going to be looking at fission, uh, specifically at the fission of uranium-235, which is used to power uh, bombs, unfortunately, and power plants as well. So. The, these bombs and power plants take advantage of nuclear chain reactions. Now a chain reaction is basically when a uh, product of the reaction is, or the material required to start a reaction rather, is also a product. So reactant also a product. In other words, for example, if you have this uranium-235 nucleus and you bombard it with a neutron, it will break up into two smaller nuclei, which are both highly radioactive, as well as releasing uh, three other neutrons, which can then go on to hit three other U-235 nuclei, which in turn will release three more neutrons each, etc. And you can see how this will escalate in microseconds if uh, you have enough U-235 in there. However, if you don't have enough U-235, say you were, uh, you know, or if not any, not all the neutrons go in the right direction, some get emitted backwards out of the ball of U-235, then you don't have enough to maintain a chain reaction. And so it turns out you need what is called a critical mass, which is the minimum mass to sustain a chain reaction. So the, the critical mass is the amount of fissile material you need to maintain your power plant or your bomb and keep the reaction going until it's reached completion. So using these chain reactions you can power a, a nuclear reactor which basically just converts you know your uh, energy from your radioactivity into electricity that you can use. And it does this through heat basically. So if you have uranium-235 rods here, they'll naturally heat up due to the chain reaction. Now this heat can then be transferred into water down here, which will then undergo extreme pressure into steam, go through this turbine which will spin around and around and this spinning through an alternator can produce electricity, an electric current I. From there the steam then goes down and is condensed in tightly wound pipes in water where it is then recycled and heated once again to go through the turbine. Now to prevent a massive explosion you have these usually graphite rods called control rods. And basically what these do is they absorb neutrons to prevent the reaction from going too fast and blowing up. Now if you don't have control rods and you have a critical mass of U-235, you can make a nuclear bomb, which basically just uses all of its fuel in a few seconds and instead of heating water and getting controlled electricity out of it, you essentially convert mass of the nuclei into energy, just raw energy in the form of light, heat, sound, shockwave, total destruction. It's terrible. Now the last thing we're going to be discussing is nuclear fusion. And this is what uh, powers the sun as well as most other stars in our galaxy. So for example, if you start off with four hydrogen nuclei, you can combine them to form a helium nucleus. Now you may say, how did those protons that were originally over here as H plus ions turn into neutrons? And that is with the emission of two beta particles, each with a negative charge. So you emit two electrons, or each with a positive charge rather. You emit two positrons and you release an immense amount 
of energy, and this is why the sun can give off so much energy, because it's essentially just a uh, big burning ball of hydrogen ions that combine regularly to form helium.